So I have this mantis right here and today is the day that I'm going to basically like depin it and get it dipped and ready for the electroforming bath. Um, this is pretty exciting because I don't get many of these and uh, originally when I first started electroforming, believe it or not, a praying mantis was one of the very first things that I electroformed, but it was in a much smaller bath and the, the bath itself wasn't the greatest uh, quality and so I now have a nice big professional bath and I'm excited to see what kind of result I can get with her coming out of my big bath. So today I'll pull all the pins out of here and then make sure that she's stable so that she doesn't have any limbs that are at risk of falling off. And then we'll dip her in a sealing and graphite solution. It's the same one I use for all my organics. It is uh, Jason Walsh's solution. I've also mentioned that in previous videos, but it is absolutely a game changer solution. And I pretty much primarily use organics for any of my electroforming. And so that is my go-to solution. So I just made up some new solution because I knew my wide mouth mason jar isn't going to be wide enough, the irony, to uh, accommodate these big mantises. So I got some new, I think I'm going to actually cut this pin here so I don't run the risk of damaging, oh, steel pins, the mantis. So I'd rather cut steel pins than, than damage this delicate, delicate uh, exoskeleton, especially since it is super dry. This is easier said than done in some ways. Okay. No, I did well. We got her. Okay. We got her. Look at how pretty she is. So she, uh, with the exception of a couple antenna, she is intact and fully dry. So she is great to put in the bath and I will put a sealant chemical or the, the sealant on her. Basically just dip her in there and we're good to go. So this lovely piece of art here is called Praying Mantis Deconstructed. <laughs> so when I pulled the pins, it, it was so dry that it actually fell apart. And once again, this is one of the potential problems working in a really dry climate like we have. But I mean, really, it's just at the joints that it fell apart and that's pretty easy to remedy. So I'm just gonna literally glue this guy back together uh, and it won't take long to do that. And this is like the art stuff that uh, artists don't like other people seeing because it's not perfect and it doesn't work right the first time. <laughs> okay, so um, the wire that I used to hold them onto the foam, I'm actually just going to clip off because I don't need that bottom part of the wire uh, to be in, you know, to be getting extra um <clears throat> to be getting extra copper so this isn't quite dry this glue that i had to use for this one so i will still leave him i think for now do, do, do. and start with her okay so so I just have to get this mantis in this hole without breaking any of the delicate structures. So I'm just...
into my solution because they're not fully coated and then do it again. Okay, and I don't want there to be any kind of graphite buildup along the edges of the limbs or anything, so she'll be a black praying mantis. That's perfect. And uh, she is set. Okay. That's her. And then our male. Hmm. I put him in head down. There we go. So I'm pretty excited about this. I'm going to put them in and let them do their thing and uh, we'll see what happens in a couple days. So my praying mantises are out of the bath for the first 12 hours or so. This gives it a really good solid first coat, but it allows me time and uh, to check it to make sure that the coating is complete on the mantis or anything that I'm doing, and also to correct any problems. So one of the problems that I found on both of these is I think the antenna were just a little bit too delicate and they have come off. So I'm gonna add antenna aftermarket basically <laughs> right now so I'll add antenna to both of those this girl um, she's plating well however she's got a couple issues one she's got a bit too much plate on this one foot this was probably the foot that was closest to the anode and she's also not plating underneath her wing a little bit so I will recoat that area with safer solutions make sure that there's good conductivity in there and I will also add some antenna onto her. And then I'll latex this foot just so it stops getting coated and doesn't overplate in that location. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit of wire to, um, to create antenna. So that wire, this is very thin wire, it's 22 gauge wire. Um, it is thin enough to mimic antenna or mimic, um, feet if you need, if, you know, for some reason there was an accident and your critter is missing a leg, you can kind of modify it aftermarket like I'm doing. And then I just get the crazy glue on there and then just heat, mold it, with, with um, baking soda. And I'll get one more cut. So you can see she's got an antenna now just gonna do the same thing with her other side. If I had some tack for her feet, it would be a lot easier, but I don't. So <clears throat> she's got antenna on there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue for strength and stability. There we go. So that's gonna look really good. Just gives her just that finishing touch. Um, and the fact that there's a little bump of glue is really not gonna be noticeable once she's electroformed kind of the full the full distance. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll leave her to dry a little bit and we'll do the same with him. So it looks like one of his antenna was actually there. It just, uh, it just got pushed down against the head, which is unfortunate. Um, hmm, he's got an, he's got a leg that isn't quite in the right place. Now, if you know your plating is good, then if you're very delicate, you can actually modify this a little bit at this stage without breaking it um but you have to know you have to trust your plating skills and it's probably easier to to try to modify that now than trying to modify it later i know this plate is good but man this leg is actually pretty stiff still may have to just leave it that is a thick plate even still he may just look like he's walking since I can't move that plate um, later on I could change it um, I can heat up the copper to the point that the copper anneals um, copper annealing is something that will allow it to soften but then it will be softened until you work harden it again so um, with something like this it's not necessarily a great thing to do uh, I put too much glue on and I don't want his face to get to get destroyed So I probably wouldn't, uh, unless I was doing it at this phase, and then plating more copper over top, I wouldn't anneal the copper, although um, it is a good option, and I could do that if I really wanted to move that joint and allow that joint to kind of sit in the right place. Um, this is something that is kind of just for my own enjoyment. I'm not selling these little critters, they're just... Um, they're just things that I'm keeping because I like them. And it reminds me of the praying mantises that we have or, or have had. All right. So once this guy's done, I'll let him <laughs> I'll let him dry again. Having some problems with his foot. So what I'll do is I'll dry them. I will rinse them off in water. And then I will apply uh, a conductive paint over top of the glued joint and anywhere that I feel like the glue has touched. Um, there we go. Same thing. He looks great. Oops. There you go. That just gives them a bit more personality. I'll just make sure that that is fully on. There we go. And let them dry and just uh, apply safer solutions anywhere that hasn't fully, fully sealed uh, or fully painted. And then they go back in the bath for 24 hours and then they will eventually be essentially done. Here's my big female. Um, she's pretty much fully electroformed. However, there's one more step I want to perform, uh, and that is burning out her insides. So 
I don't want a big insect hanging out, rotting on my desk. And so I'm gonna perform a little bit of a cremation for her. Um, what you need is a ceramic plate or carbon fiber plate. I'm just using a heat resistant ceramic plate and a butane torch and uh, a quenching bucket full of water. I gotta go get water in this. So now I have water in my bucket. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna have is pliers so I can pick her up and put her in the water. Um, and then I'm going to have a brass scrub brush and some gloves, which I can use to then scrub her under the tap inside. So for now, I am going to basically just apply heat to our little girl here. Um, and you literally gotta go until stuff starts coming out and she catches fire and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, unfortunately, with a mantis this big, there will be a lot of stuff inside and I just don't want that to be sitting around inside my house um, with my kids playing with them and that kind of stuff. So I think it's just better if <clears throat> I just burn out her insides and then um, she's just basically a copper insect that doesn't have any organic material left in there because it will all be burned out. So I'm just going to keep doing this um, and she will basically, it will turn into ashes inside and so what I'll be left with is basically a sterile copper form and then I can choose to make it pretty again by basically repeating the last step, sealing any spots that have kind of come apart and recopper forming her again so she's all pretty again and then I can patina her. So anyway, I'm gonna do that, um, wash her all off and then I'll get to the next step. Thanks. So I'm done burning out the mantises um, and you can kind of see you get a little bit of the flame patina on uh, burning out so she, they don't really need patina now because they're actually pretty cool looking. Um, but they do need a little bit of polishing and, uh, and so I think I will polish them and then be done with it. Now this one I've kind of polished a little bit on my own. You can tell she looks a little bit more shiny and she's got a little bit of that really nice purple kind of, uh, gunmetal patina. So I'm really happy with how she ended up looking and now they're completely burned out so there's no organic material left in them uh, which kind of makes me a little bit happy with that. Um, now to polish I'm going to just basically use a Dremel with a really kind of fine brass tip and safety glasses and I would usually have my shield but these little fine brass tips don't tend to spray too many little brass things so I'll just demonstrate a little bit. say that is about what I'm happy with and the last step and final step which I will do out in my garage and not film it is I to maintain some of the shine I will uh, put a coat of Protect-A-Clear on both of these mantises so a little while later I will get a close-up shot of one of these mantises anyway thanks for watching and I hope this whole video was helpful and interesting.